let's go ahead and get started then. Um, all right. So what we're going to be doing today, um, to give you sort of a, a big picture view, when we were looking at data sets before, we looked at different measures of where the center of a data is. Okay. And that was like the mean and median and mode. And we talked about different situations where we might want to use one over another. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, how spread out the data is. Okay. Um, so we could say measures of spread or you could say variability. Um, this tells us how much is the data clumped up in the middle and how much is it spread out. And that gives us another sense for how all of the points in the data are distributed. Okay. So um, to, to give you an example, you know, as, as we follow through here, um, if, if I were to measure everyone's height and I said that the average height was, say, 170 centimeters, then that gives you a piece of information about the people. But I don't know if everyone in the room is all almost the exact same height or if I have some very short people and some very tall people and they happen to average out to, to that 170. And so, um, you know, our, the idea of measures of spread, it'll tell you how much do we have the data clumped in the middle and how much do we have it spread out, okay? Um, th this is gonna be useful on a couple of levels. So we're, we're gonna first look at it in terms of just looking at a single data set. But in the overall goal of what we're trying to do in this unit, we want to look at a population and understand what's going on in a population by looking at a sample, okay? And we know that when we take a sample, it doesn't perfectly represent the population. It's not going to be exact same. And so we know that when we take different samples, you know, different samples vary from one to another. So this is kind of our first step in measuring amount of variability so that we can quantify how much samples vary from one to another so we know how reliable our samples are um, when we're doing statistics. Okay, so what we're gonna do to start with, um, um, we're gonna start with, I think, what is the simplest way to measure the amount of spread outness in a data set, and that is the range, okay? so. The range of a data set is just the difference between the highest and lowest data values, okay? So if I wanted to write a formula, I would take the uh, highest number, and subtract the lowest. Okay. So we just take that, that difference and that will tell us um, what the range is, okay? Now, the range then is gonna be one single number that just tells us how far the data is spread apart, okay? So when I look at a data set, if we look at this 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, the range isn't from 10 to 50, the range is how far that distance actually is, okay? So what I'm saying is the range isn't two numbers. It's not, you know, what's the lowest and highest number. The range is how far is it from the lowest to the highest number, okay? So this distance here is the range, okay? So if I wanted to compute it, our range, we would just take the difference, 50 minus 10, right? Highest data value minus the lowest data value, and we get 40, okay? So what that tells us is that all our, our data set, you know, spans a range of, of 40 in whatever units we happen to be looking at, right? If I'm just looking at a set of numbers, there's no units, okay? Um, if we, you know, go back to like our cats example from before, when we were looking at the weight of cats, our range would be measured in pounds, just like our, our data is, okay? So, you know, if there if there was a range of, say, four, we would say, well, there's a, a four-pound difference between the heaviest and lightest cat, or, or you know, there's different ways to describe it. Okay, so 
what we're looking at here is two different data sets, right? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then 10, 29, 30, 31, 50. Okay. Um, notice that both of these data sets have the same mean. They have the same median. And if I look at the range, well, the highest and lowest value is the same, right? I have the same 10 and the same 50. So we actually have the same range. But when I look at these two data sets, they don't look the same to me. When I look at this first one, this data set, I have data that is evenly spread out. Okay, and in this data set, when I look at it, most of the data is clumped in the middle, and then I have these two points that are far on the outside. Okay, but my things that I'm using to measuring, right, my statistics, are identical for these two data sets. So I feel like they're not really telling me the whole story. Okay. And the mean and median, that's fine. They're only supposed to tell me where the middle of the data set is. Okay. And these two data sets look like they have the same middle. It's just the spread outness that looks different between the two. And the range isn't doing a good job of telling me that. Okay. The range is saying that these are, you know, essentially the same, and they're not. So that's why we need something that's a little bit more sophisticated. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at next. Let's, let's see if we can find something that's going to be sophisticated enough to tell me the difference between these two data sets. Okay, and keep in mind, the goal is not to figure out what's going on with a data set with five points. We use these small data sets because I can clearly see what's going on um, so that we can think about our, our tools that we're going to be using for bigger data sets. Okay, so again, this is telling us that, um, well, let's, let's look at a third data set here. In this third data set, I still have a mean of 30 and a median of 30. Okay, so this third data set is the same as the previous two in terms of the center, but here I can see it has a much smaller range, right? From the smallest to the largest data value, I have a range of four. Okay, and so there the, the range is telling me, oh yeah, everything is going to be very uh, tight together because I, I don't have a lot of distance between the smallest and the largest. So here it does seem like the range is, is doing an effective job and, and telling me what's going on. Okay, it's just not very descriptive. It, it you know gives me only a very rough idea. Okay, so when I have data that's equally spread out versus clumped in the middle, the range doesn't tell me very much. Okay, what it does do is it tells me if, if there's nothing, you know, far apart, right? When, when it's all, when there's no, you know, outliers or anything like that. Okay, but it, it doesn't do a very accurate job of telling me about variability. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at something that's uh, a little bit finer tuned. Now, what we're going to do, I want to show you um, the process of building up to the thing that we have called standard deviation. And most of you have probably already heard of standard deviation and maybe have computed it before and worked with it. But what I want to do is help you understand what it is by figuring out where it comes from. And then hopefully we'll have a better intuitive sense for what the standard deviation is telling us. Okay, a big goal in this class um, is to understand what the numbers mean instead of just how to compute them, okay? All right, so let's look at this thing called deviation, all right? Um, if I look at the distance from uh, data values, say from the mean, this is called a deviation, okay? So here we're gonna come back to our cats example and for each of the five cats, we're going to find the deviation from the mean. Okay. Now, earlier we had computed that the mean was 8.02. So we're just going to make use of that. We're not going to recompute the mean here. Okay. But we could enter these five numbers in and compute the mean to get 8.02. To get the deviation, what we do is we take the difference between our x value and the mean. Now, remember that the mean the symbol is x bar. OK, 
Okay, so what we're going to do is subtract each of our x value, or uh, you know, take the difference, right? Subtract our x value and the mean, right? So x value minus the mean. So our first, our first one was 6.8. If I subtract the mean, I get a negative number. Okay, so that tells me that this cat um, is below average, right? Because their weight is a smaller number than the mean, right? Which is the average. Okay. So when we get a negative, that just says that we're that many pounds below average. When we get a positive, that's that many pounds above average. Okay, so we take our subtractions, and we find deviations from the mean. Okay, now this is just going to be a stepping stone. Our goal with measures of spread and measures of uh, center are to summarize a data set. Okay. And this isn't a summary. I have five data points and I have five deviations, so I haven't done any summarizing yet. Okay, so this is just a, an in-between point. So what we can do is we can say, well, I could try to find the average of these deviations, right? The problem is that when I want to take an average, I want to start by adding everything together. And if I add those numbers together, right, so um, if we take our our deviations, right? So our first one was negative 1.22, and then we had 0.18, and then we had negative 0.52. I'm just reading these from above, right? Then 1.38, and then 0.18, okay? And if I get out my calculator and I add all of those up, It gives me exactly zero. Okay. Now, we could say that exactly zero might have been like a fluke or a coincidence here. Um, but uh, it's, it's not. That's actually going to happen for any data set. When we just look at the deviations from the mean, they're always going to add up to zero. Okay. Um, you know, because we have some positive and some negative values. And so that's not very helpful. Then if I take an average, I'm just going to get zero for any data set. That, that doesn't tell me anything. Okay, so what we need to do is get rid of the negative signs. Now, what we could do is just say, well, why don't you just forget about the negative signs? Just add up, you know, just keep the, the absolute value, right? The 1.22, the 0.18, the 0.52, 1.38, and 0.18. And that's fine. We could do that. And if we were right now developing statistics for the first time, I think that's what we would do. We'd just say, well, forget about the negative signs. Let's just average these deviations without any negatives. And that would give us an average deviation from the mean. And that, that would tell us how spread out the data is. What we're going to do is something a little bit different. And the reason that we're going to do something different, we have the benefit of hindsight. People have looked at this and said, well, this doesn't really give us the best story or the best picture of what's going on when we just look at the deviations. Because when I look at a data set um, where things are clumped in the middle and then a few things are far away, that's sort of different, a different spread outness than everything being sort of like evenly spaced apart. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to make lots of small differences not count as much as one big difference, okay? Um, and that will give us, that will make our numbers line up a little bit more with what our intuitive sense of spread outness is. So not only do we want to get rid of the negatives, but we also want to make the big differences count more in a way. So what we're going to do is instead of just looking at taking the negatives away, we're going to square them all because squaring uh, makes big numbers a lot bigger, but it doesn't make small numbers a lot bigger. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the squared deviations. Okay. And I don't want to go through and square each one, so we, we're just going to take advantage of this being written down. Okay. We're going to take each one of those distances from the mean and we square it. And so that's done two things that's made them all positive 
but it also takes the bigger numbers and sort of emphasizes them, and small numbers get even smaller. Okay, so now what we can do is we can average those squared deviations. Okay, so what we could do is we could say, all right, I'm going to take 1.4884 plus 0 0.0324 plus 0 0.2704 plus 1.9044, plus 0 0.0324, and divide that by 5, and that will give me the um, average of the squared deviations. Okay. Once again, there's another... Uh, wrinkle here um, that we're going to talk about. When we compute standard deviation, when we, we're taking an average, and you should divide by how many things there are, and if we're working with populations, that's a perfectly good way to measure things, and we will do that. But it turns out that when we take a sample from a population, that those samples will always, and especially when we take so small samples, they underestimate the amount of spread outness that you have in the whole population, okay? And there's sort of a lot of math behind this. This isn't, this isn't just like a guess or a quick fix, but it turns out that if instead of using the number of things, right, in this case there were five data points, if we use one less than that, then our sample standard deviations give us a better approximation of what's going on in the population, okay? So instead of dividing by 5, we're going to divide by 4. Okay, so we get 0.932 pounds squared. All right, well, it seems that we've created a bit of a problem. When we squared our deviations, we end up squaring our units. So instead of ending up with our units in pounds, we end up with units in pounds squared. And pounds squared is not very useful. I don't know what that means, right? I know what pounds are, but pounds squared doesn't seem to make sense to my brain. So it's not really a great thing to talk about. Okay, so this pounds squared thing is something that you can talk about in statistics called variance. But for our purposes, we want to use something that makes a little bit more intuitive sense, something that we can talk about and understand. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix the units by square rooting everything, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the square root of 0.932, um, there's like a typo here, this would be equals. When I take the square root of 0.932, I get 0.965, but now my units are in pounds, and that's a good unit, right? That, that works really well. So um, that's kind of how we fix things. Okay, so a way to think about this, the standard deviation is just like the average distance from a data point to the mean, okay? We've just done a couple of things to fix problems that um, statisticians have thought about that we probably wouldn't have thought about, uh, you know, if we were just developing this in our class, okay? So this is the formula for it, okay, our standard deviation. We add up all the deviations, square them, and divide by n minus 1. Okay. Um, what I want to emphasize here is that you should always be using technology to compute this value in this course. Okay. Um, we're not going to use this formula. Okay. And, and I'll show you what I mean when we do our next example. But the reason for that is that computing standard deviation, if I have a data set of, let's say, 15 things, which isn't a very big data set, computing this would be very time consuming, right? Because I'd have to first compute the mean, which isn't too bad. And then I need to make this list of deviations, right? Then I square all of the deviations. Then I add them all up, okay? That's just to get this top part here. And then I plug that number into this formula. I divide by n minus 1 and square root it. That's a lot of steps. And 
our end goal in this course is not standard deviation. Standard deviation is a tool that we're using to do other things. Okay, so it's just way too cumbersome. Even if you're using a calculator, it's too cumbersome to use this formula. What we want to do is have the calculator do all of the work for us. We want to say, here are my numbers, compute everything for me. Okay. Um, when we talk about standard deviation, what I want to note, just a minute ago, I said when we're working with a population, we can just use the averaging like normal. You divide by how many things that you have. Okay. Um, we have another typo here. This should be inside the square root. Um, when we're using a population standard deviation, we're going to divide by how many things are in the population n. When we're working with a sample, we don't divide by how many things are in the sample. We divide by one less. Okay. And again, the reason for that is very subtle, but it's it's to make our sample standard deviations be a better approximation of the population standard deviation. Okay. And when the sample is very big, it, it doesn't make a difference, right? The difference between dividing by 99 and dividing by 100, you won't see much of a difference, okay? But when you have small samples of like 5 or 10, then it does make a little bit of a difference, and then this little corrective factor will give us uh, a better estimate of our population. Okay, it's important to look at the difference between these two formulas so that we understand why our calculator gives us two different numbers for standard deviation. When we use our calculator, it doesn't know any context. It doesn't know if we're giving it a sample or a population. So what it's going to do is it's going to tell us both numbers. Okay. So what we need to keep in mind is the correct symbols. Um, S is going to be um, from the sample and sigma for the population. Okay. Um, in this course, we're almost always going to be computing stuff from a sample. Okay, there might be like a rare exception in some example somewhere, but we can pretty much safely assume that we're always going to be using uh, data from a sample. Okay, so when we go to pick out the correct number, we want to pick this, the sample standard deviation, not the population standard deviation. Okay. And when we do an example, I'll show you they're very, the numbers are very close, but they're not exactly the same. All right, so let's go ahead and, and take a look at how to do this. Um, so this is the steps written down, but, but I'll walk you through how to do them. Um, what we want to do is say, all right, um, let's suppose that some manager wants to test two new training programs. He randomly selects five people. Um, and measures the time and minutes it takes to complete a task after completing the training for both before and after, I'm oh, sorry, after the training. Okay, so we have two different training methods. So what we want to do is um, find the mean and standard deviation for both uh, of these data sets. Okay. Okay, so let me show you how to do that on our calculator. And um, I have the steps written down right here, okay, for referring back to later. All right, um, so on our calculator, if we hit the stat button, it brings up a menu and I click edit, okay, and we have our list L1 and L2, and, and we've seen this before when we were computing um, means, we, we sort of walked through this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to enter this data set in, right? So 56, 75, 48, 63, 59. Okay, so I have two different data sets. I'm going to enter them into two different lists. So I'm going to put training two into list L2. So I have 60, 58, 66, 59, 58. Okay, so now what we're going to do is press the stat button again. This time we go over to the calculate menu, and at the top there is one variable statistics. We can hit number one or just hit enter. And for our first data set, the list is an L1. We don't have a frequency list, so leave that blank. Okay, or if your calculator, if you have, you know, the older style calculator, it, when you 
press one variable stats, it might just pop it on the screen and say one variable stats. Okay. And then what we do is we hit second and then one to get L1 on there. And say, okay, I want one variable stats on list L1. Okay. So X bar we know is our symbol for mean. So let's write that down. That's 60.2. And I'm going to write x bar 1 just to keep clear that that's for our first sample. Okay. And then here I can see the s and I can see the sigma. Those were the symbols that we just talked about for standard deviation. And they're close, but they're slightly different numbers. Okay. And we want to use the sample standard deviation. We're going to use the s1 okay, for pretty much everything, right? The sx1. So 9.93, uh, I'll write 935, we'll round to three places. Okay. All right, um, my calculator, you know, it gives me a bunch of things. It tells me the lowest and the highest data value. It doesn't compute the range for me, though. So if I wanted to compute the range also, right, because we talked about that earlier, um, I would have to go a step further and actually subtract these two. Okay, so 75 minus 48 gives me 27. Okay, but I have to do that calculation on my own. The, the calculator won't give me the range. It just gives me the right stuff to do the range. Uh, oops, I think it was 75 minus 48. Okay. To get the information um, for my second data set, I'm going to repeat the process. I hit stat, go over to calculate, same thing, the one variable statistics. But this time I want to use list L2, so I can hit second two and compute the stuff out of list L2. So then I go down to calculate. Okay, and we see that we have the same mean, 60.2. And our standard deviation is very different. 3.347 if I round. And then if I go down, it tells me the max and the min, 58 and 66. So I'll use those to subtract and get the range. So the range is 66 minus 58. which is eight. Okay, so I wanted to do those computations while I had sort of the instructions here on the screen, but what I did was I ended up jumping ahead a little bit, okay? Because what we want to do when we start a problem like this is to start by looking at what our variable is, okay? So if we go ahead and write that down, um, for our first data set, my variable is the time that it took to finish the task for someone with the training number one, okay? Um, and that was a time in minutes. Okay. For variable number two, it was the time to finish using training number two. That's also in minutes. So what that means is that when I compute all of this stuff, mean, standard deviation, range, all of these are going to be in minutes, right? So it gives me units here. Okay. All right. And this is, again, just kind of walking you through what we just did. Enter the data in your calculator. Okay. And, and try out that one variable statistics. Okay, so again, you can refer back to this and it gives you step-by-step -step, uh, process and, and how to compute um, standard deviations. Okay, so we're not using those formulas. All right, so 
uh, going back, let's just write these down again. Um, for training one, um, we had 60.2 minutes was our, our mean. And our standard deviation was um, 9.935 minutes. Okay, for training two, the mean was also 60.2 minutes, and the standard deviation was 3.347 minutes. Okay. What we want to do now is see if we can answer a question, right? When I look at the original problem, the manager wants to know which one of these two training programs is better. Okay. Well, both training programs give us the same average time to complete some task, right? You know, our, our results in terms of the average look the same. So then we have to say, well, um, what does the standard deviation tell us? Okay. Um, when we look at the standard deviation, when we have a, you know, first data set has a much higher standard deviation than the second one, what does that mean? Well, that means that um, the amount of time that it takes to complete a task is varying by a lot. Some people are very quick and some people are very slow and it averages to 60.2, okay? And when we have a training program, we don't want, you know, some people to be very quick and some people to be very slow. We want everyone to get better, right? In the second training program, we have this very small standard deviation, okay? So it seems like, you know, you still have some people faster than others, but they're gonna be a lot more consistent. They're a lot closer to each other, okay? Um, so that's probably a better training program. I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean that for one individual, it, it would produce better results, but if I'm, but if I'm looking at a training program and I'm, and I'm the manager, I sort of want everyone to have good results. I don't want some people to have great results and other people to have terrible results, okay? So it's probably better to have the thing that is more consistent and that will, um, you know, probably work well for everybody, okay? And so in that case, we probably want the small standard deviation, okay? So a small standard deviation means the data are more, you know, clumped up or closer together. Okay. which means that we have more consistent data, right? So for if our data in this case is, you know, the results of a training program, we have more consistent results, okay? Um, and that's not always good. It depends on our data set, right? Maybe we want things more spread out, okay? We have to pay attention to context there, okay? Um, but what the standard deviation tells us is that, you know, it tells us how spread out the data is. Is it very spread out or, or not very spread out? Okay. Um, maybe going back to the very beginning, right, when we had these really simple data sets, we could say, well, what, what does the standard deviation look like for these? Remember that they had the exact same mean, median, and range. Okay. Um, if I wanted to compute the standard deviation, all I have to do is, is enter those data values into my calculator. Okay, so we have our first data set, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. We have our second one, 10, 29, 30, 31, 50. And let's just do a quick comparison between the two. So in our top graph, the standard deviation is 15.8. And in our, in our second graph here, it's 14.15. Uh, uh, so the standard deviation is actually not all that different, right? And it's because these, you know, far away points are pretty far away right? And those big distances count by a lot. But it's not as high, right? It, it is smaller. There's less spread outness, right? Because I have some clumping in the middle, OK? 
Okay, but overall, my, my data set is still pretty spread out, whereas here it's, uh, you know, completely spread out. Okay, if I want to compare the third one, I right, put that one in the mix. Make that list L3. So here we have 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. This one doesn't seem very spread out at all, so let's see what the standard deviation has to say about it. So I compute for list L3. And here my standard deviation is 1.58, so this one is really small. And again, what the standard deviation is telling you, what you can think about that is how far are the points on average from the mean. So here, my points on average, I can think about as being like one and a half away from the mean. Okay, it's not exactly that, but, but you know that gives you a rough idea. Okay, um, whereas up here the points are you know over 15 away on average. Okay. All right. Any questions about standard deviation? Okay, well then that's it um, for this section.